This is a dry zone, once the most fertile region in the land. Here, in ancient times, the Sinhalese kings built a vast network of tanks. Beached by enemy invasions, they are now left desolate and abandoned by a sick nation. Under the constant shadow of death and disease, the people have fled to the sanctuary of the central hills. And slowly, through the centuries, this region which once saw the flowering of two great cities, Anuradhapura and Polanarwa, is left to the mercy of the jungle. Now only the crumbling monuments stand as epitaphs to the splendor of a vanished age. As more and more people abandon the dry zone, the cities, the temples and the villages are choked and smothered by the relentless march of the jungle. Invasions caused the decline and fall of the dry zone but its final conquest by the jungle was due to an enemy far more insidious, an enemy within. For over the centuries, malaria has been the greatest scourge in the lives of the people. To the jungle dwellers, it was the work of some malignant spirit. And one of the ancient methods of curing it was to stage a ceremonial dance to drive out the evil spirits. the most fertile region in the land became the graveyard of the peasant. Till 1945, malaria has been the greatest health problem in Ceylon. In the first 40 years of this century, epidemics broke out every three to five years, killing thousands of people. In 1935, the year of the great epidemic, nearly 50,000 people lost their lives. In Ceylon, the only species of mosquito which carries the malarial infection is the Anopheles cumulicifaces. And strange as it may sound, it is only the female mosquito which transmits the disease. Conditions under which the Anopheles breed varies with each country. Here in Ceylon, the malaria-carrying mosquito breeds in sunlight, in still or slow-moving water. Breeding in the wet zone is at its peak during periods of severe drought, when the monsoons fail and the great rivers shrink into pools of water. On the other hand, breeding in the dry zone intensifies after the rains. During this period, the greatest care is taken by the authorities, checking and examining to detect the prevalence of the carrier species. Among other breeding places are sand and rock pools, irrigation channels, brick pits, fallow paddy fields. In fact, wherever sunlight and water provide the conditions for Anopheles breeding. A blood test is the only method of detecting malarial infection in a patient. It also reveals which of the three different species of parasite is responsible for the fever a patient may be suffering from. A drop of blood taken from a patient is spread on a glass slide. This is then stained and when placed under the powerful eye of the microscope, reveals a malarial parasite in the bloodstream. Here is a blood film of a patient suffering from Vivax infection, as a result of which the fever recurs every other day. In this case, the patient is infected with quartan malaria, in which the fever recurs every third day. And here is the most vicious of them all, falciparum, during which the fever is continuous and can end in the patient's death. Malaria is not only a killer, it also incapacitates its victims. It saps their strength, leaving them weak and apathetic. And 
and those who suffer most from its ravages are the children. Since 1921, efforts have been made to study and control the spread of malaria in Ceylon. In that year, for the first time, a malariologist was appointed to carry out island-wide studies in the Anopheli mosquitoes of Ceylon. Since then, in the laboratory and out in the field, research work was carried out to discover the most effective measures to check the disease. A number of control methods were tried out, and among them were the construction of stone paved channels to keep the water flowing for the mosquito cannot breed in fast-moving water. The spraying of Paris green, an insecticide in fallow paddy fields. The construction of narrow drains to increase the flow of water. The oiling of river pools and streams which kill the larvae. The automatic flushing and siphoning of streams which prevented the water from pooling. And the introduction of special kinds of fish which fed on the larvae. Despite these and many other control methods, epidemics still broke out, and malaria-stricken victims far outnumbered the others in government dispensaries. It is estimated that nearly two and a half million cases were treated each year in dispensaries alone. Effective control of the disease was still the dream of the future. The year 1945 marked the turning of the tide. In the ancient city of Anuradhapura, an experiment was carried out which has since become a landmark in the history of malaria control in Ceylon. A truck loaded with DDT lent by the army authorities was a new weapon. A village on the fringe of the jungle was a laboratory, a village which for many years had been scarred by the disease. The idea was to spray DDT with stirrup pumps in every hut in the village, house by house, wall by wall, until the mosquitoes were completely destroyed. It was an experiment meticulously planned and thoroughly carried out. were the people of the village, even though it meant for many of them the dislocation of the normal routine of their lives. Little did they guess what a change for the better it was going to bring about, both to themselves and their children. successful was this experiment that an island-wide campaign was launched in 1947. Today, the superintendent of the anti-malaria campaign has a team of 25 truck units, 20 jeep units, and two walking units under his command. And so today, the work of DDT spraying goes on every day in the year both in the remotest hamlets deep in the heart of the jungle and in the town.
happening and swiftly the results have begun to tell. No epidemics have broken out in Ceylon. The death rate has dropped from 50,000 in 1935 to 1,599 in 1951. Today, the face of the dry zone is changing. Vast colonization schemes and irrigation works, up to now doomed to failure owing to malaria, have been launched by government. The imprisoned waters of the great tanks are released once again to feed the parched and sterile earth. the chief harvest of the dry zone, is under extensive cultivation once again. New colonies have sprung up where six years ago the jungle blotted out the landscape. And into the model homes and allotments of the colonies, the people who once shunned the dry zone are coming back. Free now of the shadow of disease and death, the graveyard of the peasant may once again become the most fertile region in the land. In once malarial areas, over 300,000 acres of land have been opened up for development. This is one of the most significant results of malaria control in Ceylon more land under the plough, and even more important still, a healthier, happier people. Ceylon has been voted by the World Health Organization as a model for other countries in Southeast Asia in malaria control. Much has been achieved in the past, but public apathy and indifference now could only lead to disaster. For still, the greatest weapon in the fight against malaria is your help and your cooperation. Without them, all that has been won would be lost again.